On the outskirts of Sheffield, a drug addict on a stolen motorbike is desperately trying to escape from the police. He's got so many drugs on him that he'll be charged with possession if caught. He doesn't know he's being tracked by South Yorkshire's police helicopter. Call sign Yankee 99. Can we have officers, please, to bottom of Fair Lake? This one in front of the green shutter in. But this is no ordinary motorbike. It's built for racing on a track. The junkie knows the police on the ground can't follow him. The Charlie Golf 6 is just yeah. towards Doncaster, yeah. the, yeah. the other yeah. side of Stryber. Yeah. Right, um, over in the two of fog. Uh, he's actually gone through the crossing now. But he's been outsmarted by the crew of Yankee 99. They've managed to get a ground cop ahead of him. XS99, uh, the driver's just run off. Uh, he's headed towards uh, Fryber Res uh, on the field. Of but the officer is no match for this runner. Once again, the helicopter crew have a trick or two up their sleeves. The helicopter is going to hover low enough so that the pilot can drop off two officers who will try and arrest the running man. A surprised and now subdued drug addict is in handcuffs. Tonight, out and running, the Sky Cops stay one step ahead of youths who think they can outwit the helicopter. Yeah, Gary's hiding in there. <laughs> <laughs> They're rather shocked. Sheffield Airport. Home to South Yorkshire's police helicopter, call sign Sierra Yankee 99. Today, the Sky Cops are working a tactic which allows them to catch more criminals red handed. It's called hover deplaning. What I'd like to do, fellas, is uh, to run through and have a practice of the hover deplaning. So, scenario would be that we want to deploy one of the observers from the aircraft. Why do we hover deplane? Um, simply, uh, you've got an area where you um, think it unwise to land, maybe soft ground, rough ground, sloping ground, uneven, uh, tall crops in a, in a farmer's field. You don't know how far you're going to sink into it. And, of course, there's lots of uh, very expensive equipment underneath the aircraft. Jumping out the back today is PC Cook. I was a bit uh, wary initially the first time I did it. Um, then you're aware of your training um, before you do it, that you, you've got everything in place um, so you, that you don't mess up. There's an element of danger there if you weren't adequately trained. Right, yep, OK, and circuiting. Some people may perceive it as a glamorous job, but certainly it's not glamorous, I wouldn't say. It's, it's quite hard work. Today, the hard work and Captain Hale are making PC Cook very nervous. I often tease the rest of the crew. I, I tell them I, I won't make it too high because sometimes it's quite a few feet they have to uh, free fall down through. OK, so stand by. Quite a few feet in an ideal world means less than a metre. And ready to go when you are. OK, young guy. Roger. When you do one and are prepared to jump, you want to make sure that you're dropping down as opposed to jumping up. You're well forward of the aircraft and well clear of the blades. PC Cook is well clear of the blades. Felt like jumping off a wall. It certainly uh, focused the mind. <laughs> yeah, the drop was rather further than he'd expected. Get a bit lower so he can physically get in. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to have to be quick. 9-9 is needed elsewhere. XS, XS2, Sierra Yankee 9-9. Nine, nine. 
in relation to off-road motorcyclists in the park. We've got reports of three in the area, causing a danger to other members of the public. Right, they finished that? Back to the pad? Yeah, back to the pad. OK. 99 needs more fuel. PC Cook is now a happy man, despite his brush with the long grass. Often, but when we do, it needs to be right. The bikers will have to be dealt with later. There is a more urgent mission. 99, much thank you. It's to ascertain if you're available to assist in an area search. I've got a report of an eight year old male that's been missing for the past two hours. PC Lucas is taking PC Cook's place in 99. And more details about the missing boy have come in. He's got special needs. We got a call to say that an eight-year-old lad who uh, had got ADHD, attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder, um, had gone missing from home and hadn't been seen for two hours. Right, so up the motorway? Yeah, just tuned off, basically. Put side of palms like you was like. The weather is turning nasty. Severe thunderstorms are forecast, and the crew know it. And it's fairly, uh, Dark-looking weather coming in from the west. Where are we going to be heading? Uh, north. Thunderstorms, lightning, and high winds. The weather combination air crews fear most. There was a storm brewing, as they say. Um, so concern for this uh, lad's well-being was uh, getting quite bad. Wind indicators in the aircraft suggested that it was coming our way. Obviously, with with any task of that nature, then always come and have a look. In addition to that, the last time he was found, uh, it was believed to be at his uh, other grandma. Uh, having flown for 30, 35 years plus and uh, with some 10,000 flying hours, one thing I have an, an enormous respect for is thunderstorms. You uh, you treat them very, very seriously. Yes, yes, thanks for the call. 11 o'clock. Right. Yeah, if you look over there for more than about 10 seconds, you'll see some. Wait, got some lightning? Yeah. I'd say at least 10 to 15 miles away at the moment. Coming this way at about 25 knots. To me, it seemed all of a sudden very close. You sat inside an aircraft, which is made of metal, generating all sorts of static with the rotors turning. Uh, and you feel like you just sat inside a huge lightning conductor, and that if one comes in the right direction, you, you're going to get it. Worth advising them, that we may have to haul off. Roger. It's all We are a good target. We attract energy. A strike could be uh, uh, anywhere from uh, exciting to disastrous. Hey, how far to run? We're just about here, six and a half a mile. Yes. Captain Hale is determined they must keep looking for the little boy. As we came out of the second orbit, there was uh, a lightning strike to the ground, rather closer than I would have uh, preferred. That's when the wind really kicked in and uh, went from 10 knots to 40, 45 knots. So I knew we were right on the edge of the thunderstorm cell that was closest to us. This dramatic increase in wind speed is the final straw. Unfortunately for the task and, and, and for the uh, family of this lad, we weren't able to offer any further assistance. We had to go uh, because at the end of the day, um, we're no use to anybody if, uh, if we're hit by lightning. Bravo control from 2nd 9-9. Running away. Yeah, 9-9, we've got lightning going down around us. Uh, we're leaving the area. <laughs> 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 That's uh, very good, Jason. Only Captain Hale has experienced this sort of weather before. 
and even he is concerned about the combination of lightning bolts and gale force winds. We went up to the, the maximum speed, uh, which is 140 knots, 150 miles an hour plus, if you like. Uh, and of course, we had the tailwind as well. So we're over the ground. We're approaching 200 miles an hour. Yeah, we're going to kind of skirt around it. Uh, tell us, Bernard, like, when we were just going around the hover there, it's gusting up to 40 knots. We're just on the edge of the down thrust. From the, it's probably up to about 25,000 feet now behind us here. Yeah, amazing. Captain Hale might find it amazing. His fellow crew members are just plain scared. Doug was very calm about it, I could tell, but you could also tell with the things he was saying that although he's coming across calm, he, he, he was starting to think that it was becoming an issue for us. The reassuring tone came on, and let's just talk through what's happening here. As a, as a tip, I would put that down in anything metal. You don't need to be touching. I wouldn't touch. OK. I suggested he remove the rather large metal control <laughs> sitting between his legs, because if we were struck, then, yeah, that could uh, give him a bit of a shock. As soon as he said that, I was only too happy to do that, because uh, if we'd have been struck, I might have had several thousand volts running up my arm, so uh, he went straight onto the floor and kicked it away with my feet. No, no further, just be advised, I've got uh, some quite severe weather coming in. And, the storm uh, is getting really even there. closer. leading edge of this storm actually caught up and we were getting these huge gusts of wind uh, hitting us from, from the rear and from the side and bouncing the aircraft all over the place and as soon as we started feeling those it was at that point that the lightning started coming around us. Captain Hale intends to run for home. A fast landing, no refueling. There won't be another job until the lightning has passed. I felt it was just a matter of time, and if we didn't get down there quickly, that we, we were going to get hit. It was that close. And there's just that thought in your mind that the next one might be, might be for you. Hi there, thank you, Darcy. Hey, how you go, guy? Right, Roger. As soon as he gave the nod, I, I didn't need to tell him twice, and I was out of there. It's definitely the most scared I've been whilst I've been in the aircraft. You try not calm in, in there, you know, there's a bit of bravado that I'm a roughy tufty bobby and nothing can scare me. But I'll, I'll be honest about it, I was more than happy when we were back on the ground and I was out of there. Once we were on the deck, I, I was really quite comfortable, looking forward to a mug of tea. We, uh, we all take our turn at making tea, even the pilots, which is a good thing. It's part of the bonding process, I think. It's thirsty work. Um, there's lots of talking and uh, speaking to officers on the ground on the radio. So uh, it does tend to be a dry mouth. And when you get back, you really want a cup of tea. The rain is almost tropical. Bad news for the Sky Cops, but good news for a bunch of Sheffield school children who just happen to be visiting the unit today. This is our helicopter. It's an American helicopter. It's called an MD-902 Explorer. OK? Brilliant, this aircraft. There's bits and pieces from all over the world on there, so we've, such as we've got gearboxes from Japan, we've got a camera system that's from Canada, We've got a, a kind of a GPS navigation system in there that's from Germany. Then we've got observers inside there that are from England. And they're the most important bit of all, obviously. Flight 1420, four minutes Meanwhile, in the crew's quarters, Captain Hale is ramming home the dangers of thunder and lightning by making everyone watch a horror story. In the fact, there are the city lights. Straight there. You want to go down? Not yet, but pretty soon. This news footage shows the storm on the night of the crash. As heavy rain cuts visibility even further, Captain Bushman is getting frustrated. Before I start, then, has anybody got any questions? Yeah. What are these? I knew it. That's why I asked you this one while I stood here. I knew you were going to ask me that one. What are these? What do you think they are? Fire comes out. Fire comes out. Mm -hmm. Sounds much more exciting. Guns, that's the one that we usually get. Are they machine guns? They're not machine guns. These things are quite boring, actually. And as we're flying along, Air goes up the holes, 
and it goes into a little computer inside there and it tells the pilot how fast we're going. They're heading straight to the heart of the thunderstorm. The crisis for Flight 1420 is about to get even worse. Damn, we're off course. No, I can't see it. We're way off. I can't see anything. Fire now this in front of me is unbelievable, isn't it? We just sat, watched this. I've seen it about 20 times, and I get really angry every time I see it. What were those two pilots doing? Two professional aviators. You saw this scenario <laughs> building up in the cockpit where their mindset was right away till they hit the runway. We're going to land here. OK, you've got thunderstorms, you've got lightning, you've got wind shear, you've got flooded runway. We had a situation building up very similar to that, didn't we? We knew the bad weather was there. We could see it and yet we were asked to go out and look for a missing eight-year-old child. Coming this way at about 25 knots. Just a little. If it had been not an eight-year-old child, um, then clearly the priority wouldn't have been quite so high. So what's the message for us? If you think the captain, anybody you consider to be very experienced, very capable, very able, he may not be making perhaps the right decision given that set of circumstances, and you query it. All ended well from, uh, from our point of view. I'm pleased to say the child was um, found. Uh, not without benefit, but obviously uh, it was uh, a successful completion. But it focused the mind. The worst of the storm is passing. Sierra Yankee 99 is outside, ready to fly. And already a call is coming in. Sierra Yankee 99, Roger, thank you. If you could check the park for us. It's in relation to off-road motorcyclists that's causing a nuisance up there. There are members of the public in the area that's uh, causing a danger to. We're just going to get uh, airborne and we'll come and have a look for you. Captain Hale will pilot the mission without fear of lightning or rain. It doesn't take long to get to the scene and the search for the nuisance bikers begins. PC Lucas is quick off the mark and has the bikers in sight. Foxtrot Control, Sierra Yankee 99. Um, we've come across uh, a bike that was two up. Uh, Billy, a passenger, had no helmet on. He's just been dropped off. Any officer in the area, over? I noticed the uh, the bike um, on, on the roads on the estate and could immediately tell from the air that, one, the riders weren't wearing helmets. Uh, and from the, the style of the bike, I could tell there wasn't, didn't appear to be a, a number plate and uh, it appeared that they were quite young as well, probably too young to be riding the bike legally. They will spot somebody just from the body language. The hoods go up and they turn their backs uh, because they know that we're filming and it's all being recorded. The crew now have to get ground cops into position, fast. Any mobile in the area, please? Penrith Road, uh, a bike that's made off from Sierra Yankee 99, uh, drop one off uh, in the area. So when we shouted to see if there any resource available, at least to try and contain these lads. Oh, you're joking. We were told that there was nobody available at all, so we had to try and think out of the box a little bit, if you like. Thinking out of the box means stopping them getting away. But we look right up down the, that path. Roger, just to uh, update you with the pillion who has no helmet on, he's now riding this bike, and his mate uh, who has a helmet is on the back. They've gone off road and they're back onto Penrith Road now. Uh, sorry, the uh, allotment area at the back of Penrith. Roger, that's all received. Any mobile that is uh, passing Penrith Road area, can try and give some attention, please, regarding these two on the bike near the allotment, Penrith Road, control over. Nine Nine's crew are now in a difficult position. They know where the bikers are, but they still can't get officers to the scene. Yeah, Gary's hiding in there. Okay, now I've got to was starting to panic, uh, and they went underneath a tree, hoping that uh, we wouldn't be able to see them. But uh, fortunately, we were. We got them on the uh, the thermal camera, and we could see that they'd gone under the tree and stayed there at the bottom of somebody's garden. So hopefully we can get a car in here, yeah? No, 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 have you uh, any mobile uh, available just to assist us trying to speak to uh, two lads on the motorbike? Uh, one with a helmet, one without. They've both been riding this bike on and off the road. Uh, trying to get away from us. Um... But there's bad news. 
Yeah, I spoke to Foxtrot, uh, they are saying there's nobody available either on the response Foxtrot, team or their SMT either. It was a particularly busy afternoon in the Sheffield area, so we were told nothing will be able to come for several minutes. Uh, perhaps 10 or 15 minutes, in which case these two would get away. It's now clear that 99 is going to have to come up with a solution, and Captain Hale has one. Uh, I'll try and come round the downwind and get a look on the other side. Hover and deplane his skycops, just like they rehearsed earlier. I said, let's land, uh, because it was perfectly legitimate and safe to do so. And on that occasion, we had two crewmen in the back, so there were four of us flying all together. Okay, the helicopter is downwind, well away from the hiding bikers. They shouldn't suspect a thing. There was a bit of a hillside between us and them, uh, and all they'll have seen is the helicopter going too low for them to see whether they realised we were landing or just thought we'd, we'd flown down the hillside a little bit, I don't know. 1298, 230 receiving, still in the trees. Yeah, I don't know if you've got a gist of what's happening. We've deployed to out the back of the aircraft. As PC Lucas and co move in, 99 resumes position above in case the boys run off. They haven't. Both are now being read their rights by Skycop Lucas. I've got two detained with a stolen motorcycle so far. <laughs> they were rather shocked. They, they had no idea. They didn't hear us coming at all. They just stayed put when we appeared under there uh, with a flying helmet still on and uh, just uh, got a hold of them and started asking what they're up to. Uh, but uh, for, for a minute or so, you could tell they didn't, they didn't really understand how we'd got there. Yeah, I don't know if you've got a gist of what's happening. We've deployed to out the back of the aircraft and we've got two detained with a stolen motorcycle so far. Roger, that's received. Thank you. Uh, I'll uh, try and get somebody up to assist you. Appreciate yes, many thanks. Certainly, that is a side of the job, as far as being a beat officer, that I absolutely loved, the thrill of the chase kind of thing. I'm more than happy to jump out and, and get hands on. A big success. Hello. Looks pretty good, I think. <laughs> From excess, uh, there's been an RTC on Fox House Moor. Are you able to attend, please? But 99 is now one crew member short and will have to return to base before they can help out. OK, dramatic departure. Back at base, PC Ian Cook is getting ready to fill the empty seat so they can attend the accident. PC Scarven is also on the way. Basically, we're going to be going up Abbeydale Road as far as we go towards Fox House, is that correct? The scenario is um, off the road cyclist, broke his leg, it's a compound fracture, yeah, uh, bleeding me. profusely. Right. Oh, go away, in the box, seven miles to go. <laughs> the scene of the accident is remote, a long way off the beaten track. PC Scarthen is going to have to walk from here. The injured man is fortunate. Another off-road biker saw him crash and phoned for help. I've just come for a quick blast on the bike over here. I saw him messing around with the uh, motorbike down at the bottom. And as I came over round the corner, he just came off the back of it, hit one of these rocks, and both his legs were wrapped round the wheel. PC Scarthen has two paramedics with him. They've also walked here. <laughs> his foot was hanging off. His foot had gone through his back spokes, and it basically uh, severed his leg by bar his skin. Fortunately, a paramedic was with us, so we didn't have to get hands on too much because it was a horrific injury. Oh, God! But the emergency team are in big trouble. This is the middle of the moor. The ambulance is at the bottom of the dirt track. There is a track up there, but there's no way we could get an ambulance up there. We had to, to walk two miles to where it was, and the guy was in a lot of pain. He's obviously freezing cold, um, potential of shock, hypothermia, that kind of thing. Uh, the paramedics on scene are uh, believe it's that serious that we need to medevac him. Normally, this would be a job for South Yorkshire's air ambulance. Is the uh, air ambulance not available? The air ambulance is not flying after 9pm. OK, OK. 99 now has to find a safe place to land. Another job for PC Scarven. Just find a rocky spot for the helicopter. 
So while we're dealing with the casualty, I had to run round the uh, the fields at the side and identify a, a nice flat piece of, of, of heather. OK, that's good, thanks. Here comes the cavalry. Hurrah. But even the cavalry have rules, strict ones. Before Captain Hale can agree to airlift the man to hospital, he must be sure they're dealing with a life or death situation. Police helicopters are not designed for, nor should they be used for medical ev evacuation. Given certain parameters, um, then we are allowed to do um, what may be necessary if life is at risk. The question we need to ask for the paramedic is, is he going to die if we don't take him? Right, OK, simple as that. If it's a case of it being difficult, as opposed to necessary, it's have to be difficult. That's the way the rules work. The debate can't take long. The injured man hasn't got time. He'd already lost a great deal of blood, and they said if we can't get him to uh, the hospital within minutes from now, he will die. Welcome aboard. Speed is now of the essence. Right, so we're back to the hospital, yeah? Yeah. Right. Nice. And they will be ready for us. Yeah, there's a uh, waiting party for us. Gotcha. We'll be there in five minutes. Right, pal. Beats four-wheel drive, don't you reckon? Yeah, it's by a mile. <laughs> Thank you. Right, we're going to get you to the hospital. Right, we're going to get you to the hospital. We certainly saved him a very uncomfortable drive in a Land Rover, I think, uh, down a bumpy road and probably an hour an hour and a half's worth of queuing in traffic. I think we saved him an awful lot of pain. <laughs> How's the guy looking? Is he all right, Ian? Uh, yeah, he's doing good. Yeah. It's perhaps one of the most rewarding parts of the job. We don't do many Kazivaks. Um, this one was the first one I'd done. And coming down. Okay. It's something a little bit out of the ordinary. A sense of achievement that we've put the aircraft to good use and, uh, and saved somebody's life. As the biker goes to the operating theatre, 99 returns home. Afterwards, his surgeon is able to confirm that he's out of danger and his leg's been saved. But it was a close call. If you hit your shin hard enough to break out through the skin, what you actually did was you started losing your leg. <laughs> an, an open tibial fracture is it's basically a partial amputation. Infection gets into the bone, it stops the healing process, and a significant number of people will still lose their limbs as a result of infection in a fracture. The longer the delay between the injury and their definitive treatment, the more likely you are to run into problems in future. The quicker we get people here, the quicker we can start moving and the quicker we can get that risk as low as we can. Nightfall means the long shift for Captain Hale and his crew is over. At last. What a variety, eh? The injured man on the moors has made a full recovery but has given up off-road biking. And the two boys spotted by PC Lucas had their motorbike impounded and were given a court order.